Bog Wars. The Sick Wars. Time to slice and dice. This is Heat 5, eight manic metal munching machines to send the crowd into a frenzy and opponents to robot heaven. Could we be seeing a genuine title contender in 259? Will the house robots hold sway? Or in the twisting, turning, churning arena, will another dashing blade finally emerge? Seatbelts on, reach for your helmet. Prepare to get dizzy as we leave them all in a tizzy. I can promise you that sparks will fly as the blades whir and bite deep and the hungry audience bays for carnage. Perhaps the pit will be a welcome release because look what we're about to unleash. Vicious, dangerous, cruel, unrelenting, merciless. Robot Wars the Sick Wars, time for 259. Welcome the master of mayhem, Craig Charles. Wow! Ha <laughs> <laughs> Welcome! Heat 5, Robot Wars, the sixth war. Now, these days, Robot Wars is raging all around the world. Germany, Holland, Australia, even America's just joined the war. Not like them to leave it to the last minute, is it? I like to think that Britain still got the best designs, the best engineers, and judging from this lot, the biggest loss for carnage! What a show coming up. Destructive weaponry, watchful house robots, flames and flips, 259 and the seeded wild thing. Will the ref bot keep control? Who will be counted out? Down and out. What a lucky audience we have here tonight. Eight awesome robots for them to see. For the first round, they'll be split into two four-way melees. So let's see who meets who. From Dorking in Surrey, Agrobot 3. Third appearance in Robot Wars, never be on the heats. Take me through the weaponry, quickly. Weaponry, very, very quickly. <laughs> Those are jaws, they're clamping jaws. That was a 30 mile an hour sign, and that's what it does. <gasps> Ooh! So we can't get an extra speeding round our way Did you now. get caught by a camera when you did that? Not now, not down. now. <laughs> A stealth shaped pointed wedge with lifting arms and cutters, similar to Sakilalot, works both ways up. Lightweight laminated armour that shunt won't penetrate, agile but subject to driver error, they tell me. From Chadwell Heath in Essex, 259. Oh, this looks very frightening to me. Talk me through this robot. It's gorgeous. There's a weapon, yeah. which is this large <laughs> disc. Um, Spins upwards about 130 mile an hour. Oh, okay. In the qualifiers, we basically put out all three opponents in under 30 seconds. So uh... hopefully that's all we need to hear. 100 kilos in weight has that vertical spinning weapon. Only nine miles an hour top speeds. Quite a big ground clearance. And Adam Clark hasn't had the best of luck in previous wars. From Battersea in London, infernal contraption. A big spinning drum thing. OK, two first-timers in this next battle. Yes. Before I ask you what is going on there, I'm going to say, do you want to know who you're up against? I would like to know that. Infinity, 259 ah. and Agrobot. OK, 259, three numbers I don't mind. And now watch this bit in your hand. Well, this bit <laughs> is a bit that decided not to work in our garage this morning. What is it? It's a speed controller. Can you get it done in time? Oh, yeah, it's just a case of being out. Watch for the swinging drum between the wheels. Can get up to speed in three seconds so they don't have to wait between attacks for the weapon to recover. And that weapon has four big teeth. From Aberystwyth in Wales, Infinity. To Infinity and the Pond or something like that. 
Hello. Hello, first time at Robot Wars. How are the nerves coping? They're not. They're going, they're going mad. Are you driving? Oh no. Who's driving? I am Thomas. 259, yes. Agrobots, yes. and Infernal Contraption. Yes. How does that make you feel? Going home now. You're going home now? Yeah. <laughs> I've had enough. I've had enough already. <laughs> Claws and diamond tip spikes provide the weaponry, runs both ways up, has strong armour, but exposed wheels, and the team does lack experience. Roboteers, stand by. Let's have a look at the teams up in the pods. Agrobot 3, Captain Mopedia Leech on the left, 259 and Adam Clark on the right-hand side. And now on the left there, Infinity, their Captain Steve Fern, and on the right, Infernal Contraption, their Captain Jonathan Pilai. They're in the arena for the house robots, the flamethrower, the sergeant, bash, and Sir Killalot with the pincers and that deadly lance. Three, two, one, activate. So here we are, the first of our four-way melees in this heat. And immediately, a bit slowly into the action goes Infernal Contraption there in the middle. Two, five, nine, looks potentially very, very destructive. Infernal Contraction and Infinity do a little bit of battle and Infinity is already bent and buckled. Also doing good work out there is Agrobot 3, very experienced. Once beat Razor, I seem to remember in Robot Wars 3, Agrobot trying to get in underneath Infernal Contraction. Low ground clearance Infernal Contraction. Infinity has pressed the pit release button. Well, it needs some sort of merciful release to get it out of its all oh, pain! And Infinity has decided enough is enough, and they've driven straight into the pit. They released the pit button and uh, went straight into it, which is sensible. Mind you, when you consider the punishment they'd already taken, was that a sensible move? Now, look at this. 259 bumping and barging against Infernal Contraction, which is invertible. It means it can run both ways. A lot of robots can these days. There's Agrobot to the left. That's Infernal Contraction. And it seems to me Infernal Contraction had taken damage. And I wonder if we've seen some sort of plexiglass just thrust across the arena there from uh, 259, ripped away from Infernal Contraption. You can see there some sort of shard has gone from the top of it. Agrobot in against one of the arena sidewall angle grinders. Yes, you can see there the damage to Infernal Contraption on the top. There's more now. And it was 259 that came in with that mighty weapon. We heard Adam Clark describing it early on again. I'll tell you what, there's some bruisability in that big spinning wheel. We're not talking about spinning fine lace out of that. We're talking about, oh, metal munching. Infernal Contraption is feeling the pain. There's poor old Infinity down in the pit, and Infernal Contraption wants to get in there with him. Come on, please, 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 move up, punch up, punch up. I want to get in there as well. Record counting them down. Well, the crowd know that it's the end of Infernal Contraption. Cease. And they go out, along with Infinity and Agrobot 3, and the impressive 259 are through. Infinity. All that money, all that time, all that effort and they drive themselves into the pit. Infernal Contraption, the boys from Battersea, they got battered. 259 and Agrobot 3 go through! Now, by the end of that, robots were queuing up to get into the pits. But you were in there first, weren't you? We were indeed, Did yeah. you think that's... That meant you were going to win. It was definitely the safest place to be, I think. Yeah, we were on top of it, and then it opened underneath us, which was a bit unfortunate. I right. Think. <laughs> okay. So, how much damage have you sustained? Mm, no, that's about it, really. A couple of nicks here and there. The rest that's is it. fine. We're still running, and everything else. So, so we're, we're still running, and the bot is okay. We just damaged the claws. They look like uh, antlers now compared to claws, <laughs> but uh, we've got a spare set, and uh, we'll be back to rumble next year with a bit of luck. Okay. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I've got to get my camera out for this. Damage cam. OK, I'm ready to go in. <laughs> Where do I go? I take my pick. Uh, that's nasty. Now, who did the most of this damage? Well, it's 259. Yes. As I said, I was afraid of those numbers, and uh, my fear was justified. Yes, you were quite right. And you're not the only ones, I have to say. There are people now quaking all yeah. over the pits so that they've seen what this robot is capable of and what this yeah. man has designed. It's a beast, isn't it? It is. 
Adam Clark, brilliant design for 259 and Agrobot 3 there through. Infernal Contraption and Infinity have gone beyond. Time for four more! From Newcastle under line in Staffordshire, the stack. Now this one can beetle about. It may be new, but look at that. It's wondrous. All working bits and everything. What an incredible hat. Look at that. What's your big weapon? Our big weapon is our crushing claws. And how much power have they got? Seven, seven tonne of the ram. That's nothing to be sneezed at, is it? No. The aluminium shell, homemade speed controllers, hydraulic pincers crushing at those seven tonnes, a rear spike. Oh, and don't forget the chicken on the back. From Clacton on Sea in Essex, Vader. Ooh, the shape certainly isn't dark, Vader. Have you got anything special that you need to tell us about here with Vader? Um, only our magnificent weapon at the end there, which will cause a lot of damage if we can point it in the right direction. If I had a penny for every time the bloke said to me I've got a magnificent weapon, I would be rich by now. Yes, transparent 8mm polycarbonate sheet armour. The spinning disc is mounted vertically and sticks half out of the robot, but it can't self-right. From Vale of Glamorgan in Wales, UFO. Out of this world, man. Totally. Well, a new robot to Robot Wars, UFO. What's special about it? What's that weapon there at the front I can uh, see going it's on? It's a big lifty up spiky thing. Oh, designed wow. to cut into the bladey thing above it. Yes. And we also have a couple of bright, lighty, shiny things at the front and yes. some floppy, spiky things at the back. Oh, well, you're going to bedazzle them then. Absolutely. Technology you're not, you're not nervous about being up against the seeded wild thing? Uh, absolutely terrified. Oh, good. <laughs> That's what we like. A compact invertible machine thing with a weapon thing that combines the ability to lift and crush and cut opponent thingies. But the weapon is only really effective when right way up. From Ash in Hampshire, the number nine seed, Wild Thing. Twice series semi finalists. This is serious, this one. The stress factors are quite high for our seeded robot ears, aren't they? Oh, yes, very high. Palpitations. <laughs> I said to you earlier, do you think you're in with a chance this year? And you laughed. Uh, I did laugh. Well, we're always in with a, a bit of chance, and uh, there's a lot of luck involved. Experience, reliability, stamina, strong chassis, fast, manoeuvrable, powerful alloy steel. The cutting disc runs at 1500 RPM, but it's got a high ground clearance and exposed tyres. Roboteers, stand by. Have a look at the teams in the control pods. On the left there, Paul Rose, the captain of the Vader team, and Wild Thing, Nick and Isabel Adams. On the right-hand side here, the Stag and their captain, Terry Martin. On the left, UFO and their captain, Peter Withers. In the arena for the house robot, Sergeant Bash, the front pincers, the flamethrower, lick of flame. And there's to kill it again with the crushing claws and the lance to penetrate. Three, two, one. This for a place in round two of this heat. Two robots will survive this stage, don't forget. A bit tentative early on, you can see UFO there in the middle. There's a the great shove of the stag beetle onto the back of Wild Thing. There at the controls of the stag is Mark Pepper, a technology consultant driving. You can see there Vader and that uh, vertical spinning wheel once again. Wild Thing, very tenacious and dogged Wild Thing has proven over the years. Reached the semi-final of its heat in Robot Wars 5. We're seeing there uh, young David Martin in the stag team, 11 years of age. Wild Thing caught in the pincers there, I think, of the stag. UFO very tentative and so to Vader. This is KG. I think the chicken's come off. Did I see the chicken there, the stag had come off? Well, I mean, that's that's it then, isn't it, really? It's powerless now. The stag picked up by Sir Killalot. Sir Killalot, don't think if you've not seen him beforehand that he's going to topple over when he does that sort of dance. Not so. Now, there we can see 15-year-old Isabel Adams at the control of Wild Thing. Very experienced at Robot Wars with her dad, the Adams family. 
Wild Thing comes back on the attack. That looks a formidable play this time around. The pit release has been activated by UFO. In comes Vader. It's beginning now to hot up a little bit. Wild Thing circling to try and get a purchase on Vader. UFO in there as well. The ref bot is counting out the stag, I think, in the CPZ. There goes the stag, counted out. Any second to kill off. We'll finally finish it off. I think they've been immobilized too long and counted out. There's the chicken. The stag's vital weapon. There's Vader on the side. Wall angle grinder. Wild thing though is taking punishment. Should it go to a judge's decision, it could be decisive. They mark on control, style, damage, and aggression. There are the controls of the stag Mark Pepper. I was sure they were counted out. Wild thing on the flame pit. As Vader's disc stops spinning, it has! Now what has happened here to the weaponry of Vader? It has stopped spinning, it's 20 kilos in weight. Well, that doesn't matter one jot if it's not working. UFO has prodded and pushed its way through the heat with great effect. The stag, I think, is going to end up not as a stag beetle, but uh, as a dung beetle, really. Oh, UFO, what are you doing? Cease is called just before they went down to the pit. I think the judges will be called on here as well. The stag definitely go out there in the pit of oblivion. But we're going to have to go to the judges for the rest. They'll be looking at style, control, damage and aggression. Greg, let's just have a look at the highlights once again. Damage caused there. The stag wheel came off, or tyre, I should say. Wild thing causing damage. UFO slammed against the side wall. Vader looked very strong at this stage. Yeah, that was the end of the stag. Wild Thing taking damage there, UFO looking cagey but controlled. Coming in on the attack of Vader that finished limply. The judges are going to have to have a hard decision here. UFO pushing the stag in but nearly going in themselves. The judges have made their decision. And this was not easy. Very close. But the judges have gone for Vader and Wild Thing! The disappointing part of that battle for you is that you haven't made it through. No, we lost the tyre, sadly. And we were just that talking. was enough? Well, yeah, unfortunately, the wheel doesn't reach the floor now. Right, so that's why you couldn't get we very We were still far. mobile, but we're more concerned about the paint jobs being ruined now. Hat. I have to show you. Look. Any damage to the hat? No damage to the hat whatsoever, <laughs> I can report. And a big smile, please. Well done. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Was it fun while it lasted? It was really good fun, yes. And um, we've taken a few hits, but um, I think she'll be ready for next year after a bit of work. Show me some of the damage then. Anything um, really bad? We've got big holes in the titanium sheet here. Yeah. Um, very big gash here, and that's through titanium as well, so that's pretty impressive. Yeah. Um, of course, the spotlights are gone again. Oh, but, dear. Um, that happens every battle, I don't know why. But you were having a good old scrum. <laughs> yeah, we gave it a go, and um, we're going to come back with something a bit stronger next year, so... You've learnt the lesson. Yeah, just to do it again and be silly and waste lots more See, money. most people would say, yeah, I've learnt my lesson, I'm off now. <laughs> Off out of our solar system anyway, UFO and the stag through go Wild Thing and Vader. And in round two, in just a few moments, Wild Thing will meet 259. First up, Vader and Agrobot 3. So, four robots dishonorably discharged, but for the four left fighting, round two awaits. What's this stuff? Because people are finding it quite hard to get through, aren't they? It's polycarb, it's 8 mil polycarb. It's been penetrated a little bit, but it's quite resistant for impact. It absorbs a lot of energy. And 8 mil is thicker than the average robot? Mm, it's probably thinner, actually, than the average robot. Do you think? Yeah, there's it's a lot of it, though, so we've had to go thinner to try and keep the weight down. Right, OK. But Agrobot, not worry? Well, it's less worrying than the other one we could have gone against. OK, good. <laughs> so it's good news for you, this draw. Agrobot team. Hello. What are you doing? Preparing. What? Uh, odds and ends. Odds and ends, what like? Uh, like, 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 like. 
Where's the bits? Can't find the bits. Can't find oh, the sorry. bits. <laughs> That's one bit. Oh, just surface things then. Nothing. Yeah, you and know. a few, you know, where they've gone through. Stick that there. That'll do. Um, What's the damage? You're up against them, Vader. Oh, we are, are we? That's magic. They're new newcomers, but, you know, actually prove their worth, I think. Yes, I think so too. Do you think you can get them? Yes. Where it hurts? Yes, most certainly. Good, enough said. Vader team, Paul Rose, Simon Latham and Philip Playthorpe. Agrobot three boys, the Leach family, Peter, Bob and John. In the arena for the house robots, the tusks and spinning flywheel of Matilda and dead metal and the pincers three, in the saw blade. Two, one. Terrific battle here, Agrobot three with all the experience, but Vader with that great spinning blade. Also, it has it, its spikes and scoop as well, can cause damage. Oh, and immediately does on Agrobot 3, lifting 100 kilos in weight and backing away to have another onslaught. And as that slam, bam, no thank you, ma'am, per Agrobot 3. The Vader boys look on. Agrobot 3, to me, does not look the most mobile of machines. And the Leech boys are worried here. I wonder now whether the two 500-watt drive motors have got disturbed by the slab. Because certainly, Agrobot is in danger. Dead Metal is in there, the Redbot takes a look. Vader's blade spins, Agrobot are heading out here, I think. In Series 3, they lost in their heat final to Blade. In Robot Wars 4, they were seeded, and they lost in the heats to Smitty. And here, Agrobot 3 are out of Robot Wars, the Sixth Wars. That is a surprise. Vader looked good for me. Agrobot 3 hammered early on in this battle. And that is what caused the damage. That initial bump and bounce they never got going. They just look stunned, don't they? Dead Metal about to put the frightening looking one, Agrobot 3. Now you may paint a robot and enter Robot Wars and think it's frightening, but look at Dead Metal. That is truly frightening. Cease. I think the grin was a grimace. Agrobot immobilized, then tossed into the pit of oblivion. Vader, go through to the heat final. What went wrong? I wish we knew. I wish we knew. I mean, you're one of the only robots ever to beat our reigning world and UK champion. You beat Razor at yes, one stage. Did. Yes, we've been So brought... you're certainly a, a decent robot. Well, it's in your own words, mm -hmm. we don't know yet the cause. Mm -hmm. These sort of things happen in robot wars. It's true. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Um, something came loose in that that initial was, smack, wasn't it? Yeah, it did. I don't, I don't know what yet. We'll obviously find out. But it's been totally reliable up to this point. In, yeah. Through the qualifiers and through the first round heats, we did well. Now you've got to be disappointed. Well, we are, because we took quite a few whacks from 259 and uh, we were still running. But uh, we don't know yet what it is. OK, ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it. Agrobot 3! Yeah. Guys, um, that was fairly easy, wasn't it? Walk in the park. Wasn't bad at all. I, I would say it was a very carefully aimed blow, but I think I'd be lying if I said that. <laughs> <laughs> what was your tactic when you came into the fight? What do you think you were going to try and do? You, you must have thought it was going to be harder than that. Well, the biggest weakness we have is against flippers, because our machine isn't particularly low at the front, so we wanted to try and avoid their basically uh, the, the front of their machine. Yeah. So we want to try and go then from the side yeah. and just try and hit something vulnerable, okay. which you've obviously done. Which so. is what you did, yeah. <laughs> Immobilise them. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it. Team Vader! Come on, guys. We were expecting a certain amount of damage, but we weren't expecting it to stop. We took an impact there, and it's something dislodged something inside. That looks like just let me yeah, just yeah, get in there. That it's, just it's looks like down that way, and a it's surface no damage. scratch. But after that, it just stopped. Move away. <laughs> Thanks very much. It was good fun to watch.
the words of the poet Charles, you may be a clever dick, but Agrobot 3, I bet you feel sick. Vader through to meet either Wild Thing or Two Five Nights. Here, Adam. Yes. This robot what you have built, mm -hmm. would you say it's indestructible? Um, I don't think it's indestructible, but I don't think there's anything here that can destroy it. What, not even Wild Thing, who you're fighting next? Wild Thing? Yeah. No, not so wild, you're going to tame it. Um, I think we're going to show it the wild thing with um, <laughs> with our disc. Let's go and see how they react to the news that they're fighting the hottest robot in town. You guys are fighting 259 next. No, the horror. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> it's not, not good, is it? Nine. It's not great news, is it? Oh, he's really? still going on the block, isn't he? Yeah. Do you think, you, could, you know, have you got any chance against that spinning disc? Uh, yeah, there's always a chance. You might miss and spin up the ring. The number nine seed, Wild Thing. Roboteers, stand by. What a height then for Adam Clark and 259. Not without reason, though, Nick and Isabel Adams and Wild Thing are seeded nine. In the arena for the house robots. Dead metal, spinning madly. And they're alongside to fight for us. Matilda, Grizzly, ugly. Three, two, one. Activate. Will the new kid on the block, 259, destroy Wild Thing? We've been there, done it. Put the logo on the back. 259. Bunching and bruising into Wild Thing, tossing it over and over and over! Look at this! This is determined destructibility from 259, dog with a bone there! Wild Thing! Can there be any life left after that sort of formidable onslaught? Well, Nick Adams is very experienced, he's a good driver, and he turns Wild Thing away from the blade onto the side of 259 to hold on there. Hold it on for grim death, really. Stay away from that spinning flywheel. Oh, has the wheel stopped? Wild Thing got away from that sort of bashing and bruising. And then the spinning wheel seemed to stop. Now, this could be absolutely decisive. Because without that wheel, what has 259 got? At the moment, he's running away, uh, to be honest. He's pressed the pit release button, Adam Clark. And now it becomes very cagey. And I wonder who's got the extra thrust and shove. 259 weighs in at 100 kilos, Wild Thing 97. But Wild Thing, piggybacking up on 259, has turned this battle on its head there. I don't know whether it was by design or luck, which is what Nick Adams said they'd need at the start of this show. And certainly 259's weapon being immobilised has played into Wild Thing's favour. Now it becomes a real tug of war. Wild Thing pushes 259 back onto the flame pit. This is real nip and tuck now. Oh, and do you see the belt there, right in the arena centre? That's Adam Clark's weaponry drive belt that's come off. So no wonder that big old circular disc is no longer spinning. And Nick Adams looks on. Wild Thing has come right back into this after 259's destructive onslaught early on. Now, is Wild Thing still going? Can Adam Clark yet turn? This battle, or is his machine finished? I think 259 is immobilised. There's the belt. I think it is finished. Well, Cease. this is a major upset. For me, Wild Thing will go through. What an amazing fight. What a spectacle. It's going to have to go to the judges. While they're making up their minds, let's review the highlights. No doubt about it, early on, 259, brilliant. That is so impressive. 
Huge mark scored. Wild thing, no way back into the fight on the evidence of that. But here, coming up, is the decisive moment. 2-5-9, and that's where the weaponry went. That's where the belt came off, look. And the whole fight turned. There it goes. That effectively was the end of 2-5-9. And the judges have made their decision. It's based on style, control, damage and aggression. However, 259 was immobilised. They've gone for Wild Thing! <laughs> you know, there's going to be an awful lot of relieved roboteers in those pits. Oh, I think so, yeah. It's, um... You came out and you were battering that robot. And then, what happened? Um, well, I lost the belt. Um, they'd obviously just lost the drive to their disc as well, but we probably should have tried to cut them in half before then, I suppose. Yeah, you were, you were tossing it about like a, it was like a, like a cat with a mouse. Yeah, um, I mean, I was trying to get it over to the wall to get them out of the arena. That yeah. would, be the, would have been the next bit before the belt went, so... All right, don't be too disappointed. Yeah. A brilliant robot, brilliant design. Let's hear it, 259! <laughs> Whoa, that was real... She's your pants stuff, that, wasn't it? Yeah, that was very tough. I mean, it's like what you proved in Robot Wars Extreme. You've got such a good motor in that robot. It just keeps going on and on and on. Well, he has got a lot of long life, and I suppose that's where he picked up the points afterwards, because Adam really gave us a beating at the beginning. Yeah. Hopefully, <laughs> we keep on going to the end. OK, congratulations, you're through. Let's hear it for Wild Thing! You're sitting here, well, the yeah. three of you are sitting yeah. here making decisions like that, which obviously are controversial. You can, you can tell that by the reaction of the yeah. audience. What happened? Surely 259 should have won on aggression. It should have won easily. I mean, we're very sad about making the decision. 259 battered Wild Thing all over there. Wild Thing, the new Wild Thing performed very badly, but ultimately, uh, 259 was immobilised. It's a bit like a fight with two boxers, with one boxer's doing all the work, and then on the end, there's a lucky punch and he goes down, and that's how it was. And we didn't want to have to make that decision, but it's we have to be fair and consistent, and that's Robot Wars. OK, thanks, Noah. I'll let you get up with very important work. They're going for a cup of tea, I am absolutely gutted. I think 259 was a potential champion. No more, they're out. And the final of this heat, Wild Thing against Vader. OK, here's the announcement. It's Vader versus... Wild thing. Yeah. I just hope we don't have the same thing we had in the first round, where we ended up put together for most of the fight. We ended up just dragging each other around quite. Have you worked out a way to avoid that? Um, well, the only thing you can really do is just try and go for the more structural part rather than going for the um, centre of the body work. I'm going to drive straight into their disc. Are you? Actually, the, the strongest part's at the front. Um, where there's uh, less polycarb, there's the trouble. Their their look, their sharp cutter sits in the polycarb, but their disc is actually vulnerable to very hard uh, strike. It will bend. So I reckon rather than try and run away head on, it'd be the best. Okay. So they're all thinking very carefully at this stage because there's a lot to play for. Well, a few new robots were initiated the hard way tonight, and frankly. That's the way we like it. But before tonight's main event, let's see how our finalists got this far. Should the night have belonged to this machine, 259, so strong against Infernal Contraption, Infinity and Agrobot 3. I thought we had the winner. Infernal Contraption thrust all over the place. 259's great vertical blade, so impressive. Infinity in the pit. An infernal contraption wanted to get in there with him. In the other first round, we had Wild Thing, Vader, UFO and the Stack. They might have had a lovely helmet. Their machine, though, went out. Wild Thing as dogged and determined as ever locked horns with Vader. As they joined forces, UFO went out. 
In round two, Vader used the dark force. It seems to beat Agrobot 3. It was over in a trice. A one-hit wonder. For all Agrobot 3's experience, they were counted out by the ref bot and ended up in embarrassing style down the pit. If that battle had been over too quickly, what a delicious fight we had with 259 and Wild Thing. 259, so impressive, hugely so. Seemingly on its way to great things. But then, with one last onslaught, the weapon drive belt came off 259. The battle had turned. With this fatal moment, the fight went Wild Thing's way and into the heat final, as dogged, determined as ever. Grace joined me up here in the Crow's Nest. We're pondering about this one. Wild Thing, very durable, goes on and on and on with the spinning disc. But then you've got Vader with the vertical spinning disc up against it. It's very impressive so far, but then Wild Thing beat 259 previously. That was another vertical spinning desk. I'm going to go for the experience here again of Wild Thing, because whatever it does, it just seems to go on and on. Well, I'm, I'm going to go with you on this one. Wild Thing, we saw it in Robot Wars Extreme. It is so durable. It, it just keeps coming at you and coming at you and coming at you. You think it's beaten, and yet it gets back up, and it just comes on. It's got a nice flipper, a nice spinning disc, but a good team, an experienced team. Vader, not so experienced. Tough robot, but I'm going to go for Wild Thing on this one. Anyway, it's the heat final. Let the wars begin. Robotiers, stand by. So we the heat finalists, Paul Rose, Simon Latham and Philip Playfort, with their Vader machine. And Nick and Isabel Adams. Nick at the controls, Isabel at the weaponry. A wild thing! The heat final has Shunt in the arena, representing the house robots with the bulldozer blade and the axe, and Sir Killalot. Three, two, one, activate. Wild thing with the high speed vertical cutting disc, Vader with the vertical spinning disc. And that comes into play first. Wild thing. A lot lower, lighter, 97 kilos, three kilos lighter. It's the quicker of the two robots, more manoeuvrable across the arena floor to get in to cause damage and away from damage. And Shunt slams down with the diamond-edged axe onto the armament of Vader. Wild Thing clinging on. Isabel Adams at the controls of the weapons. One little tactic they could use, if they can flick Vader, it can't self-right. One and a half centimetres of ground clearance. I think at the back of Vader, that's its Achilles heel. A real push and shove match developing. Wild Thing coming back onto the attack on Vader. Blade hits Blade. Sparks will fly if that continues onto the flame pit now. Don't forget, the winner of this through to the series semi-final. And already, some tough robots have made it there. Pit, 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 I think they're calling. Are they calling flame pit? Wild Thing has been there before. Is Vader moving here? I think Vader is in trouble. Wild Thing glances, the weaponry is still moving. But there is no forward momentum for Vader, or is there? There's Nick Adams at the control of Wild Thing. Vader is going nowhere fast. Wild Thing trying to cause damage onto the transparent 8mm polycarbonate sheet armament of Vader. There at the control, Simon Latham of Vader, the new boys to Robot Wars. And the thing taught a lesson here in durability. Down comes the axe of Shunt, and that has wedged the Vader weapon. A decisive blow for the house robots. They get the speed up again for the weaponry. But it just stopped them absolutely dead in their tracks. The red bot comes in. Wild Thing has done a lot of good work here, and I think their blade may just have serrated 
the uh, armament there of Vader. Difficult to see from this angle, but I do think they just got a grip there with a circular saw. Wild Thing has taken damage. You can see the scratches. I don't know how superficial they are. Again, the axe comes down. Wild Thing on top here for me. But it's been a good old battle, hasn't it? Shunt now. Pushing Vader. Vader, the meat in the sandwich, not too pleasant a thought. Driven away across the arena floor. Onto the floor flipper. You really don't want to do that. Wild Thing giving chase. Very experienced. Hypnotist beat them in the semi finals of Rebel Wars 4. Panic attack in the semi finals of Rebel Wars 3. There's the pit. You can hear the release alarm button sounding off. Side by side, they Cease. dance. Cease is called. It goes to the Robot Wars judge's decision. Lots of pushing and shoving, lots of sticking together. It's too close to call. We're going to have to go to the judges. And while they're making up their minds, let's review the highlights. We wanted destructibility. Boo hoo, they stuck like glue. But it was a tactical battle, and Wild Thing, they were aggressive. They took a little bit of damage there, I think. Only superficial. It wasn't the most controlled driving of Wild Thing, but throughout, they were wily. They were pushing Vader with good tactical nous into the CPZs, onto the arena sidewall weaponry, into the house robots, and that could be the most destructive blow of all. Well, the judges have made the decision, and it's unanimous. Based on style, control, damage, and aggression, they've gone for the ninth seed, Wild Thing! For the ninth seat, they so are no disgrace there. No, and they've never ever been stopped either. No, I mean they go on and on and on. They do. No, they don't. But you came close to um, to defeat them. I thought um, you just kept getting stuck together all the time. Though, why was that? I think it's that their discs just basically get stuck in our side armor, and once that happens, we haven't got enough traction to try and sort of sort of wrestle ourselves loose. Yeah. It was nice waltz though, wasn't it? It was very. Yeah, it was, it was, it was an elegant dance actually, wasn't it? Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it, Team Vader! You seem to lack a pure blow. I mean, how many times have you been to a judge's decision? <laughs> Virtually every one, unless they break down, you're right. Yeah. We try and get a killer blow in, but this time we, they got their weapons stuck into our poly car, we got stuck into theirs. We did a lot of ballet dancing out there. I mean, it's got a good battery in that robot. It does go on and on forever. It does, yeah. And it kind of wears, it's like a, a war of attrition. It kind of wears other robots down, and it's always got much stronger than the other robot at the end. Yeah, it does keep going at the end. So, yeah, we shall always stand a chance. Let's see if you can reach the end this time, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. Let's hear it for Wild Thing! <laughs> well, if you think our robots can be had by yours, then come and have a go on Robot Wars. Bye bye. on Robot Wars, the Sick Wars, a Colossus Demolition Man. And the number 11 seed Stinger, always ready to give it a whirl.